Hi friends, this week I read you a story about a ladybug and I read you a story about a caterpillar and both of those are things that have hatched from eggs. Today I have something else. This time I don't have a model of it, I have the real thing. So I'm going to move my computer so you can see and I have a tank, I call this tank a habitat and I'm going to show you what's in the habitat. I have some things for climbing. So I have this little log, so that's a climbing thing. And then I have a big pine cone. That's another good thing for climbing. I also have a little water dish that has some fresh water in it. Ooh, I might move the water dish a little bit so I can put the log there. I like to make it go up on a ramp. I have a couple rocks. I have kind of this blue rock in there for a decoration. I have this big gray rock. That's a good decoration. What do you think lives in this habitat? If you are someone who comes to school in the yellow room, you would know that this habitat is for hermit crabs. So our preschool yellow room has three hermit crabs, and I'm going to show them to you. And we gave the hermit crabs their names. This one has a kitty cat shell. Look at the shell. Doesn't that look kind of cute? Little kitty cat shell. And then do you see, can you see the hermit crab inside? Maybe he'll move a little bit. Oh, I see him coming out. Do you? So this hermit crab's name is ZD. Oh boy, he wants to say hi to you. Okay, ZD, back inside the habitat. This hermit crab has a shell that reminds me of Nemo. And this crab, oh, there he comes. This crab's name is guacamole. Oh, ready guacamole? Go back in. And then under the sand, way down low, is a hermit crab named Shelly. Now Shelly is hiding and she doesn't want to come out. And when I looked on the computer to see why Shelly was hiding, it said that she might be shedding her skin or she's letting one skin die off and she's having a new skin grow. Now, do you want to see if maybe one of these hermit crabs will walk and you can watch it walk? Okay, I'm going to bend this down so you can see the table. And it looks like, I bet, guacamole will be a good crawler. All right, let's watch for a minute and see what happens. Now, I don't want guacamole to fall off the table, so I'll watch. I'm going to be very quiet. Do I see him coming? Can you see him? Let's see if he walks. He's turning himself around. Let me take ZD out too. Maybe they would like to be together. All right, ZD. I try to be very quiet because I don't want them to be scared. Ooh, guacamole really is moving around today. He lives inside that shell and an artist painted the shell. Isn't that kind of silly? If you found a real shell, it wouldn't look like that. Oh, he keeps going. He's trying to get back in the tank, in his habitat. All right, who I think ZD might come out now. He's in that cat shell. So there goes guacamole walking around. Is there a door for my habitat? No, I can put things in from the top. I see ZD. I think he's coming out to say hi to you. Ooh, thank you for being so friendly today. Now I'm going to put them back in their habitat so I can tell you a story about hermit crabs. Now, if I want to be a good pet owner and take good care of my hermit crabs, then I need to make sure that they have some new shells. And so I have a new shell in here and I have another one too. And when they start to get too big for one shell, they'll move into another shell. All right, follow me and I'll tell you some things, 
some more things about hermit crabs, and we'll read about them today, too. So my habitat usually is in the yellow room, but since I can't go to school, I wanted to make sure I could still take care of our hermit crabs, and so I brought them home to my house. Now, I have a picture of a man who wrote a story about a hermit crab. So here it is. Wait a minute. Do you know that story? We just read that story the other day. So this says, let's find out about Eric Carle. So Eric Carle wrote the story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And if you remember, it was the caterpillar, this book's birthday, and The Very Hungry Caterpillar is 50 years old. So let's see if we can find out some things about Eric Carle. Said so Eric Carle writes and illustrates books for children. Many of his books are about little creatures. Let's look at some of his creatures. All right, I'm going to open it up and let's see what's inside. Oh, it says, look at Eric's little creatures. Compare Eric's creatures with the real critters. All right, so here's a real caterpillar. And here's Eric Carl's caterpillar. So the caterpillars don't look exactly the same, but this caterpillar has two antenna. And Eric Carl's caterpillar has two antenna. All right, let's see. Eric's firefly has a light on. Does the real firefly have a light? Yes, it does. Ooh, good job, Eric Carl. Let's see. He's got a book about a chameleon. Eric's chameleon is catching an insect with its tongue. What is the real chameleon doing? Ooh, if you can look. He's got his tongue sticking out and he's catching an insect. Eric's click beetle is green and blue. What are the colors on the real click beetle? Now it looks like there's those two spots to decorate, but this, this um, click beetle looks kind of brown instead of that bright colored one. So I have a story about Eric Carl's hermit crab. So this says, Eric Carl, a house for a hermit crab. Now this is kind of a long story, so if you feel like you need to take a break, you can stop for a minute and then put this video back on so you can hear the whole story. A house for a hermit crab by Eric Carl. Ooh, look at this design. Do you know how Eric Carl made this paper? He painted, and then instead of using the brush part of his paintbrush, ooh, here's a paintbrush, he painted, and then he took his brush and he turned it around and he scribbled with the back of the brush. So he used this brush part for the painting, turned it over, did the scratching part. Ooh, that was smart. I think it is such a nice design. Let's see if the back looks the same. Oh, it does. Love that. I love that so much. A house for hermit crab. Time to move, said hermit crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean. But it was frightening out in the open sea without his shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found the house he was looking for. It was a shell. It was big and strong. He moved right in. He wiggled and waggled about inside to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looks so plain, thought Hermit Crab. Were the shells of my Hermit Crab plain? Oh no, they were decorated. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed back and forth in the water. Oh, how beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you be willing to come and live on my house? It's so plain. It needs you. I'll come, whispered a small anemone. So very gently, the hermit crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, hermit crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the seafloor. How handsome you are, said hermit crab. 
Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I will, signaled a little sea star. So carefully, the hermit crab picked it up and put it on his house. Do you remember what this one's called? The sea anemone. In May, hermit crab discovered some coral. They were hard and they didn't move. How pretty you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. And very gingerly, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shelf. I can see the sea anemone, the sea star, and here comes coral. In June, hermit crab came to a group of snails crawling all over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went. They picked up algae and bits of debris, and they left a neat path behind them. How tidy and how hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to clean my house? I will, offered one of the snails, and happily Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shelf. Well, let's see what we have. The snail, the sea star, the sea anemone, and the coral. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would you be willing to protect my house? I would, said a spiky sea urchin. And gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. Did my Hermit Crabs have all of these decorations? They sure didn't. Maybe I should leave them some other things in their habitat. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark in here, thought Hermit Crab. It's so dim, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, said the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It looks like nighttime, said the sea urchin. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish dar darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, said one lanternfish, and it swam right over near the shell. In October, the Hermit Crab spotted a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I fixed you and moved you around? Ooh, Eric Carl said, rearrange. Do you mind if I rearrange you? Not at all, said the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw, and he built a wall all around his shell. Now my house is perfect, said Hermit Crab. Ooh, I let my Hermit Crabs build a wall with sand, not pebbles. But in November, Hermit Crab felt like his shell seemed too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find a bigger home. But he had come to love all of his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like a family. How could I ever leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I've outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my shell too, said hermit crab. I must move on, but you are welcome to live here but you must promise to be good to my friends. Oh, I promise, said the little crab. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that shell forever, said Hermit Crab, and he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but, oh, sponges, he said, barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. Oh, 
I liked that story about that crab walking around on the bottom of the ocean and searching for things for his shell. I have a little game to play with you. I am going to hide a little hermit crab. Now, I made the hermit crab on my computer, and then I put some sticky, some felt on the back so it'd stay up. So it's a little hard to see. Can you give it a look? Does it look a little bit like a hermit crab? This part would be inside the shell, and this is the part that would come out of the body. So I'm going to put the hermit crab on my board, and I am going to hide the hermit crab behind a shell, but I do not want you to see and so I'm going to take the board off and I'm going to hide that hermit crab. And then we're going to play a little guessing game. I'm wondering if you are going to know where the hermit crab is hiding. I have some different color shells that I'm going to put on the board. And maybe I'll let you take a little guess. And maybe you will find my hermit crab. All right. Well, now my shells are ready. Let me put them back up on the board. And... A hermit crab is hiding behind one of the shells. Hermit crab, hermit crab, you are hiding so well. Are you under a colorful shell? All right, what's your first guess? I have purple, white, green, pink, blue, red, orange, and yellow. I think my first guess is going to be red for the red room. All right, hermit crab, are you under there? Nope. Hermit crab, hermit crab, you are hiding so well. Are you under the blue shell? Let's see. <gasps> hermit crab, hermit crab, you are hiding so well. Are you under the purple shell? Oh boy. Oh, I should do yellow for yellow room. Hermit crab, hermit crab, you are hiding so well. Are you under the yellow shell? Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. Did you think it was going to be yellow? If you thought yellow, you were right. I'm going to try it one more time. Okay. I'm going to hide the hermit crab. I might not choose red, yellow, and blue for the colors of our classroom. Now, I know kindergarten has a green classroom and an orange classroom. So maybe we could try some of those shells. Hermit crab, hermit crab, you are hiding so well. Are you under the, how about the green shell for the green room? All right, let me see. Green shell? No. Nope. Are you under the orange shell? Let's see. No. Ooh, have we tried white yet? Are you under the white shell? No. Are you under the, which one do you think? Purple? Purple shell? No. Ooh, remember I was going to say blue, red, and yellow? I better try pink. Are you under the pink shell? Oh, there it is. If you guessed pink, you were right. I love playing guessing games like that. Now, before I say goodbye to you, I have some cards to show you. And these cards were made by Eric Carle. So Eric Carle used some of his artwork. And I'm going to show you just a few. So here's Eric Carle's card. And what's on this card? A flamingo. And on the back, is the letter F, a capital F and a lowercase f for flamingo. Ooh, and Eric Caro made that picture. All right, now I have this letter, H. There's the uppercase and lowercase h, and a huh, huh, hippo is on the h. And then I'm going to show you this card, R. R, we have the lowercase and the uppercase, and R is for rooster. All right, now I'm going to test you. We showed you rooster and hippo and flamingo. Which one started with the letter F? Flamingo is right. All right, which one started with the letter H? H for hippo. And finally, do you remember R? R for rooster. All right, and I'm going to show you one more set. We have K for kangaroo. K for kangaroo. Ooh. Z for zebra. And I have a G for giraffe. Okay, so I have giraffe, zebra, and kangaroo. Which animal is behind the letter K? Kangaroo. 
All right. What letter, which animal is behind the letter Z? Z zebra is right. And which one is behind the letter G? G for giraffe. Awesome. You did a really good job today. And guess what? I'm very proud of you for being scientists because you've learned about things that have a metamorphosis and things that are part of a life cycle. We've talked about the pupa and the larva. Ooh, you're so smart. It was nice to see you today. Bye, friends.